name is Renan Lajoie. I'm an assistant professor at the University of California, San Francisco, and I work specifically in the Memory and Aging Center within the Department of Neurology. So my work consists in using different kind of tools to study patients with neurodegeneration and different types of dementia. And more specifically, I use neuroimaging and other types of biomarkers and clinical measures to try to understand how the disease progresses in living patients. The question of patients' heterogeneity is really at the core of what I work on. And we can define patients as having Alzheimer's disease because we know either at autopsy or now using biomarkers. They have Alzheimer's pathology in their brain, but the way it manifests for the patients varies tremendously. Most patients develop their symptoms in their 70s or 80s, but we have patients who start having trouble in their late 40s or 50s, and we're trying to understand what is driving this. And it matters because cognitive impairment happening to someone who's in their early 50s or in their mid 80s, these patients are gonna have their lives impacted in very different ways, and we want to be able to detect the disease in everyone the same way and be able to help all patients equally. So the variability in age of onset is a main factor, but then we also have different types of heterogeneity, one of which is the type of symptoms that the patient will present with. When we hear about Alzheimer's disease, everyone tends to think about memory problems, but we also have some patients who develop different types of deficits. So we're very interested in studying patients who have this more language predominant deficits or spatial or even motor deficits as a main symptom of the disease. And we're trying to understand how these clinical symptoms relate to what's happening in the brain using biomarkers and imaging. So what's really unique about Alzheimer's disease is that it's characterized by the presence of two different types of abnormal proteins in the brain, the amyloid plaques and the tau pathology with mainly neurofibrillary tangles and other types of lesions. And in our work, we were very interested in trying to bridge the heterogeneity we see in patients clinically to the proteins in the brain. And what we saw is that most of the variability across patients in terms of what kind of symptoms they have, how old they are when they develop their symptoms, is related to the distribution and the amount of tau pathology, not amyloid. Now we need to understand when Alzheimer's pathology happens, why are some patients more prone to getting pathology in a certain brain area versus the other? And so I think this is going to take a lot of different complementary approaches to tackle that question, including some genetics, some very precise basic science to understand different properties of different brain regions. From the more fundamental research perspective, I think it's very important to understand how to develop diseases and how these biomarkers relate to clinical deficits, what drives what in the disease process, and I think our research is, is a little piece in that puzzle. Um, from the patient perspective, and we care a lot about how our, our research impacts our patients, I think it is helping us understand what kind of biomarkers can be informative at what disease stage, because we have a lot of different markers, imaging, measures from the CSF, from the cerebrospinal fluid, measures from the blood now, and these measures are not all interchangeable. They're giving us different types of information, and it might be relevant at different stages of disease. And so what we are trying to think very deeply about is how each of these measures can be the most relevant at what disease stage for what specific purpose.